We've had 56 matches in 16 match days at Qatar 2022, and boy, has it been a wild ride. We're here today to statistically analyze the best young players in this tournament so far and see if we can put together a starting 11 and bench of under 23 players. So let's start by explaining our process. Just an FYI, if you're not interested in the process, you can skip ahead by a minute or so to just look straight at the squad. First, we're going to explain our stats-based model to rank our players. Then we'll build our squad of 20 players from back to front using that model. In step one, we have 184 players under the age of 23 at this World Cup. I've shortlisted the top 40 players based on how well they've played, how much they've played, so minutes and appearances, and how well their team has played. In step two, we will analyze these 40 players to pick the top 20 that'll go into our squad here. To do this, we have 20 statistics divided into four categories. Shooting, playmaking, dribbling, and defending. In step three, we'll use our statistical model to determine a total score and player effectiveness score for each player. For the total score, a player gets 30 points each for a goal and an assist, five points each for one XG and one expected assist, one point each for shots, shots on target, accurate long balls and accurate crosses, 1.5 points for each chance they create, 0.5 points for a progressive pass, up to 10 points for pass accuracy, so if it's 90% you'll get nine points, one point for every 30 touches, one point for every successful dribble, and one point each for tackles, blocks, clearances, interceptions, round duels, and aerial duels won. And finally, ball recoveries give you 0.5 point each. So after tallying the total score, we're going to divide it by the number of minutes played by that player and multiply that total by 100 to get our player effectiveness score, right? So this basically tells you how much were was each player able to do while they were on the pitch, right? How much did they contribute to the team in sort of an attacking sense, defensive sense, or as a midfield player. Now that we have our three steps defined, we can finally get started with building our starting 11 in a 4-3-3 formation. So in goal, we have Diogo Costa, and he goes in by default because no other team was using a under-23 goalkeeper. And he's had a decent performance, right? He's He's got a good name on the world stage, and, and let's see if he gets a move out of Portugal uh, sometime soon. In right back, we have Diogo Dallo with a player effectiveness score of 61. This guy has two assists in two full 90 minutes that he's played for uh, uh, Portugal. And we've analyzed his performance in the Portugal video recently, but this guy has been immense at fullback, right? Both in an attacking and a defensive sense. In left back, we have a bit of a surprise in Ismail Jacobs, right? He's a Senegalese left back. Uh, he has a player effectiveness score of 36. He's had one assist, five chances created, 24, 23 progressive passes in four games. So he's he's had quite a uh, good tournament, right? Even though Senegal got eliminated, he's been a standout player. In center back, we have another surprise in Strahinja Pavlovic, right? He's a Serbian center back. He's got a PES of 41. He got one goal. He had 18 ball recoveries and 25 ground and aerial duels won, right? So Again, an impressive performance uh, from this guy, and he's he's relatively unknown, right? Even even though Serbia played only three games, he gets into this team, so very impressive. The second center back, we have Ibrahima Konate with a score of 36. Um, his standout stats were six tackles, and he won 21 ground and aerial duels, so an absolute monster at the back. Obviously a Liverpool player, but... You know, even though he doesn't start for France anymore with Varane and Upamecano, he's done really well for himself. Then from the bench in defense, we have two players. And this this might surprise you a little bit. We have Mohamed Salisu from Ghana. This guy had a PES of 35. He actually got one goal. He was really good at playing the ball out from the back. So 25 progressive passes. And he also had 17 clearances. In the second center back option, we have Urien Timber from Netherlands, who had a score of 29. He stood out because his passing from the back was really good, so he had 31 progressive passes, 
22 ball recoveries and 19 ground and aerial duels won. So, you know, in, in terms of what he's supposed to do as a defender, which is win the ball back, he was really good. And he was also really good passing out from the back, right? So really impressive defensive players. Let's get to the midfield. In midfield, we have Enzo Fernandez with a player effectiveness score of 51. He had one goal and one assist in the four games that he played. 260 touches on the ball, which is quite impressive, and 27 progressive passes, so passes into the final third. Um, I mean, he's, he's a very impressive 21-year-old uh, who plays for Argentina. Um, I can't believe Manchester United did not go for this guy when I think Benfica played like paid $11 million or something for him to get him. Um, so again, very impressive player, and I'm sure he'll get a move out of Benfica very soon. Second player in midfield, and no surprises here, is Jude Bellingham right? He has been the standout uh, young midfielder in this tournament and probably the standout midfielder period, right, in this tournament. Uh, he had a score of 39. He got one goal, one assist. He had 284 touches, so slightly more than Enzo Fernandez. 11 tackles and 23 ball recoveries in four games, right? So absolute monster of a box-to-box -box midfielder, and I'm very excited to see what he can do against France in the quarterfinals. The final player in our midfield, and this is going to be a bit of a surprise, is actually Jamal Musiala from Germany, right? He he also had a score of 39, and the reason why his performances have kind of maybe gone under the radar is obviously because Germany didn't get through the group stages, but he also didn't get lots of goals and assists, right? He only had one assist, but he created so much in front of goal, man. He had 1.93 expected goals, 0 0.85 uh, expected assists. And he created eight chances for his teammates. So had Germany been on form, this guy could have had four goals and two assists, right, in this tournament. And so, again, another player with a great future ahead of him. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to do much in this tournament because Germany obviously got knocked out. Now we have the bench options from midfield. And we have another Argentinian in Alexis McAllister, right? This guy, I think he has a goal and assist as well. He's been doing really well this tournament. And he kind of offers a lot of ball progression from midfield in terms of dribbling and in terms of progressive passing. So again, interesting to see what he can do against the Netherlands um, because he's probably going to start for Argentina. The second midfield, uh, second midfield option from the bench is Pedri. And the third one is Gavi. And I want to talk about these guys together because a lot has been made about the Spain team performing poorly. I think Luis, Luis Enrique got sacked today, which I don't know how I feel about that. But Pedri, I think, had an underrated tournament because obviously he didn't get any goals or assists. But if you look at some of his second level statistics, right, he had 0 0.95 expected assists. So by far the highest expected assists created by any midfielder in this tournament um at least the under 23 midfielders 479 touches and so th that's like almost double as much as the next highest player 83 progressive passes this is almost four times as high as any other midfielder in this bracket that we're looking at and 27 ball recoveries which was the second highest right his problem was he didn't have any goals or assists. If he did, he would have easily been one of the best midfielders in this category, right? And Gavi, um, I think he was a little bit overhyped. He didn't have any standout statistics. Obviously, lots of touches on the ball, um, some progressive passes. He got one goal, but he didn't really do much, right? So it'll be interesting to see how he develops in his career moving forward. So now let's move on to the forward line. In attack, we have three very exciting players, and we start straight away with Killian, the villain, Mbappe. I mean, this guy has had a crazy, crazy good tournament. He had one, um, five goals, two assists, 2.68 XG, 1.07 expected assists, eight chances created, 13 successful dribbles, and five accurate crosses. I mean, is there anything this guy can't do, right? He has a player um, effectiveness score of 100, and he's def he's not only the best young player in this tournament, so best under 23, but I think he's probably the best player in this tournament, period, right? Uh, probably after Bruno Fernandez, or, or maybe Bruno Fernandez has a lower score than him, but, you know, that's by the by. But Mbappe, in insane form, and definitely deserves to be on the left wing in, in this squad. 
Then we have Phil Foden on the right wing. Again, an impressive tournament. He obviously didn't play the first game and only played 15 minutes in the second game against USA. Um, he had a PES of 68. He got one goal and two assists. And he also created four chances in just 174 minutes, right? He's done incredibly well when he's been given the chance, and it'll be very interesting to see what he can do against France in the quarterfinals. In striker, with the highest player effectiveness score by far, and that is 175, is Gonzalo Ramos. This guy replaced the GOAT of Portugal to do a madness in the round of 16 game against Switzerland. He got three goals, one assist, six shots, five shots on target, 1.47 XG, two chances created, and four aerial duels won. I mean, have you seen a more complete performance from a center forward, um, you know, ever, right? I, I think it, what this guy's been able to do in the short amount of time that he's played for Portugal is absolutely insane, and he deserves his spot. Then from the bench, we have four players, starting with Julian Alvarez, who plays as a striking replacement for Ramos, right? Um, he had a PS of 42. Uh, he scored two goals and had 1.56 XG, so monster XG numbers from the shots that he's uh, taken. I think he's definitely a, a, a bright player for Argentina's future. He's obviously doing great things at Man City, so we'll have to see um, how things progress through his career. Next, we have Cody Gakpo, who some may argue should be starting in this team, right? But it's hard to uh, look away from what Ramos has been able to do in just the one game that he played. But Gakpo got three goals from 0.32 XG, so he took his chances really well. He's also created nine chances. He's had 168 touches and five successful dribbles, so absolutely monster in sort of building up the play and also finishing it off, right? He's done well. Um, next, we have Bukayo Saka on the wing. Again, another Englishman who's been doing really well in this tournament. Um, he has got three goals and created three chances in just over 200 minutes for his national team. It'll be really interesting to see what both Foden and Saka can do against France in the quarterfinals. Um, I mean, I think England has a better team, but but let's see what happens, right? And finally, we have Vinicius Jr., the only Brazilian in this team, um, who has a PES of 54. He got one goal. His XG plus XA uh, is 1.52, and he also created eight chances for his team, right? So absolutely um, insane performance from Vin uh, Vinny as well. And I think all 20 of these players deserve to be in this team, and especially the starting 11 of Diogo Acosta, Pavlovic, Konate, Diogo Dallo, Jacobs, Fernandez, Bellingham, Musiala, Mbappe, Ramos, and Foden. This team would do absolute bits at this World Cup. I think they could easily get to the quarterfinal stage, maybe even the semifinals, right? There are some absolutely incredible players in this team. Let me know what you guys think. Get in the comments with your thoughts. Do you agree? Do you disagree with some of my choices? A lot of research went into this video, so please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.